Good morning. Welcome to our Holy Cross parishioners and a special welcome to all who are visiting. Before we begin Mass, please take a moment and extend a hello to your neighbor. We are pleased to have you join in our Eucharistic celebration today as we celebrate God's presence in our lives on this, the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time and World Mission Sunday. The readings today begin on page 1195 in the Red Worship Book. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Gagné. Please take a moment to silence your electronic devices and please join in the entrance hymn Number 790, Lord, you give the Great Commission. Good morning. We begin our celebration of the Holy Eucharist in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our need for God's mercy. Penitential Act A, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We join now in our great hymn of praise.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We call the children forward for our children's liturgy. crowd gets bigger every week. Be sure you come back before we count the congregation. <laughs> <coughs> Our first reading is a reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses, therefore, said to Joshua, Pick out certain men, and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. The Lord is your shade. 
He is beside you at your right hand. The sun shall not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard your coming and your going, both now and forever. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from in infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God, and is use, useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him, day and night. Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. 
but when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth. The Gospel of the Lord. Not the gospel you were expecting, Judge, was it? <laughs> well, Your Honor, we know that you're honest, so. <laughs> okay. We will have just a few words about the readings because of the CMA video today. Proclaim the word, be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient, convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teach. Jesus tells this parable about the widow. In the time of Jesus, a widow was a very helpless person. There was no social security. In that time, in any case, women did not speak on their own behalf. And if this widow's oldest son was not married, she was in an even more worse position. So she badgers the unjust judge herself every day until she gets justice. Will not God, who is just, answer justly to the people who call to God? In the same way, Moses gets help in persisting in prayer until Israel wins the victory over Amalek. In the same way, our parishioners have joined together to make this new parking lot possible. This is more than just a parking lot, more than just a place to park. This sends a message that Holy Cross Parish is alive and well. For the third year now, together we begin this annual Catholic Ministries Appeal. There are two articles in the bulletin insert today about the CMA. The video begins with a few words from my good friend, Father Jim Schwartz. Since 1982, I have taken Father Schwartz out for breakfast on his birthday. In recent months, since my assignment here, we get together even more often because he is a very good mentor for priests. He asked me, why do you buck the trend in the CMA? Throughout the diocese, the number of CMA donors is declining and the average gift is increasing. At Holy Cross, it's just the opposite. I explained to him what the diocese already knows, that we here at Holy Cross operate on the principle of participation, not procrastination. If I have a choice, on one hand, I have a donor who will give $1,000, and I have 20 donors who will give $50. I will prefer the 20. Of course, I really want both. <laughs> but my target audience is those other 20 over there who are saying, I can't give a thousand, so I'll give nothing. That is not participating. That is shirking responsibility. At Holy Cross, we believe in teamwork. Last year, 52 people gave half of our goal of 105,000. 460 people gave the other half. Every gift is important. Every gift is appreciated. Bishop Matano turned 73 two weeks ago. That means that two years from now, we may be welcoming a new bishop. It is important that we put Holy Cross on the map and that we are already doing that both in the CMA and in the parish itself. Before introducing the video, I have a story about teamwork. In my third year at St. Peter's in Ontario County, it took us 40 days to pledge the goal. The next year I said to the people, let's cut that 40 in half this year and we had a good start. Then I said, I have never had a CMA committee in any parish because everyone in the parish is on the committee to make the goal. On this committee, you don't have to attend meetings, you don't have to elect officers or issue reports. 
You only need to get your own pledge card in early and get everyone you know to do the same. Your neighbors and your friends, your relatives, your in-laws and your outlaws, everyone you know. You all know someone who is not on the donor list yet. Maybe that someone is in your bathroom mirror. And then I said last Tuesday at 7.15 a.m., I saw a parishioner who had not sent in his card yet. I said, when are you sending in your pl pledge to the CMA? He said, I'm sorry, Father, I'll talk to my wife. I don't have that option. He got in his card the next day, and his name was in the next bulletin. Now, where was I when I saw this man at 7.15 a.m. on a Tuesday? I was in Canandaigua at the Y in the pool. But even there, I was doing the job that all of us need to do. That's what teamwork accomplishes. We made the goal in 23 days. So slogans can be on t-shirts, on walls and on cars, on bumper stickers, but they are just words until we make them real. Bring your CA card in as soon as you have it. I know that most of you, and even myself, who don't have the card yet, but our bulletin deadline is Wednesday noon, and if you have it, bring it, or at least certainly next week. Now, I'm going to give you right now the same promise I gave you last year, I will not say anything more about CMA on Sunday Masses until we reach the goal. Then you get my victory speech. When will that be? You decide when. Now for the video. It is impossible to ask for your support of this year's Catholic Ministries Appeal without first acknowledging the challenging times of our church. On behalf of all the priests of our diocese, we are ashamed of those who have violated the sacred trust given to us to proclaim the love of Jesus. With heartfelt understanding of the anger you might have, I ask you not to give up on your church. The church, your church, needs you now more than ever. You are not Catholic because of any particular priest or pastor. You are Catholic because of your faith and trust in Jesus. May we continue to give thanks for all that God has given us, even in troubled times. The theme of this year's CMA is, I am the vine, you are the branches. If we are truly the branches, we need to extend a caring hand, give a caring heart, 
and grow in our love for the Lord and one another. Your CMA donation directly supports the faith formation of our youth and young adults, helps Catholic charities of the Diocese of Rochester serve the poor and the vulnerable, fosters priestly vocations, not to mention so many needs at your local parish. I ask you even more urgently to generously support this year's Catholic Ministries Appeal. The first requirement we have as the disciples of Jesus is to love. When we share the giftedness we have been given, we will share the love of Jesus with people in need throughout our diocese. Thank you for your generosity, and may God bless you and your families. Our Catholic faith is everything. It provides meaning for our lives. There's such a deep hunger for spirituality and for community, and I think the church can be a great source of that for people. When you're young and you learn through faith, you understand the importance of what faith does for you. You know, and as you grow, it's already in your fiber. We can be that voice that helps them to discern a future that helps them to live their purpose. To work with, to form our families of our parishes in their faith. We do this for the glory of Jesus Christ and to bring his word and the good news to those that we minister to. It just means that we are securing for generations to come that rich, rich history of faith. The CMA is a vital expression to who we are because we are a community. It allows us to be the body of Christ in the world. We've been called to serve in the world and to live out our faith and to share it with others. To bring the love that we have experienced through Jesus to everyone we try. It's really important for people who want to devote their time to ministry to have the tools that they need. I think most deacons would tell you that they are fulfilled by living out a witness in the image of Christ the servant. They bring to the altar the needs of the community and they bring from the altar into the community the prayers and the service of the church. We priests serve our God whose mercy we don't deserve. And we serve as people whose generosity we can't repay. That constantly challenges me to be a better pastor, a better leader. Sometimes in the face of our current world, doing this job seems insurmountable. So I can't even imagine it doing without the help and the support that I do have. And that's something that the people in the pews can help ensure the faith of the future and the faith of now with their support to the diocese. As a parishioner, I was unaware of all the resources that are available in the Diocese of Rochester. But I got a very pleasant surprise when I started working in the parish center. For instance, the IT department, the Diocesan Building Commission. Both of those departments were instrumental in us building a parish center. The whole diocese relies on the Catholic Ministries Appeal. It allows us to be the branch of the vine that is Christ. People are looking for a sure and strong leader that's going to help them. The more support I have and the more people I have being trained and reinforced by the Diocese of Rochester, the more I can focus on the liturgical message and long-term visions and building up of the ministries. We are extensions of Christ's will. We need to support, in any way that we can, Christ's will in our world. So that our parishes grow and our diocese continues to flourish. We need to be there for them just like they've been there for us. This is our church and we're going to make sure that it takes care of us and the Lord will take care of all the rest. I am the vine, you are the branches. Invoking the scriptural passage in the Gospel of St. John, reminding us that when we remain in Christ, we will bear much fruit. Your donation to the appeal is a way of sharing the fruits of your labor to make a difference for your sisters and brothers in Christ, for your parish, and for our church. I humbly ask you to pray for your parish, the diocese, and the Catholic ministry's appeal. Your support and prayers are needed and greatly appreciated. 
May God bless all our efforts to serve our sisters and brothers in the family of God. We join now in our profession of faith using the Nicene Creed. What do we believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join now in our prayer of the faithful. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that the Lord might strengthen him in faith and courage as he shows the world the missionary heart of our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected leaders, that they may govern justly, heal divisions, and foster peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all missionaries who serve God and their fellow brothers and sisters, that they may continue to give witness to the Lord's loving kindness and redeeming presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who support the missionary efforts of the church throughout the world, that they may continue to share the missionary spirit of our Christian faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the names in our book of prayers, for all who are sick in our parish family and throughout the world, and for all who have died and those martyred for their faith in Jesus, as well as Kathleen Hillman, Paul Ferranti, and for Terry Masters, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> let us pause for a moment, make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you hear the prayers of your people who gather before you with joy this day. Answer us in the name of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The second collection today is for the propagation of the faith. Please join in the offertory hymn, number 782, Hail Mary, Gentle Woman.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, so that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has been the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim in song. <laughs> Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore and Matthew, our bishop, and all the clergy and religion. Remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Teresa Masters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, Blessed Grimwald Santa Maria, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
If there is anyone taking communion to the sick of our parish, please come forward. Beginning this weekend, on the table in the back of church, is a white binder for you to write names of folks you would like prayed for. Please know these names will not be called out loud, but added to private prayers. Calling all Holy Cross family and guests. After all the Masses this weekend, tickets will be on sale for the annual Haunted Pasta Dinner, hosted by our youth. Be sure to purchase your tickets and come and enjoy a wonderful meal. Also, Cub Pack 222 will be holding their annual popcorn sale. Our seventh annual Trunk and Treat event will be on Saturday, August 26th at 7.30 following the pasta dinner. Hard to believe in October that we are talking about Christmas, but we are. And that means it's possible to purchase your RPO Gala Holiday Pops tickets. The performance will be on Friday, December 20th at 8 p.m. at the Kodak Hall at Eastman Theater. Please see the bulletin or website for full details on all events happening in our parish community and be sure to like us on Facebook. Please join in the recessional hymn 663, Seek Ye First, and there will be a coffee hour after Mass in the Parish Center. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that, benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.